we have confessed our sin. We've agreed with God that we've contributed to the mess this world's in, and we've received his pardon. So let's, let's live in that. If we've confessed and Jesus has taken our sin and shame and guilt, then we can live freely in Jesus. Our, our text this gathering is one that's not often preached on because it's just, there's a bunch of cultural things going on and it's a little obscure. And normally when we're reading, you know, one of the biographies of Jesus, whether Matthew, Mark, or Luke, uh, we, we pass right on by it. But our friend Aaron Williams, he's a pastor with University Presbyterian Church here in Seattle. We have the privilege of him preaching, bringing us the word, helping us explore this today. And I uh, invite you to join in and engage as he presents to us and invites us to explore with him this particular story and how we see Jesus and us in it. Please join me in prayer. <laughs> Lord God, every word that you speak is good for us. And Jesus, in your living with us, you're interacting here with us, with people and with the rest of your creation, we see you and we see ourselves. So open us up to what you would have us see right here, online, as we gather as your people. We pray in Jesus' strong name. Amen. Hi, today's scripture reading comes from Matthew chapter 21, verses 18 through 22. Early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. He said to it, May you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly, they asked. Jesus replied, Truly, I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, Go throw yourself into the sea, and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. This is the word of the Lord. Marnie, can you say thanks be to God? Thanks. Good morning, Inglewood Presbyterian Church. It is a pleasure to be with you this morning to share a few words of encouragement from God's holy word. And I just want to personally thank your pastor, Pastor James, for inviting me to, uh, to fellowship with you this morning and to share the Word of God. Uh, although I would love to uh, be in a physical space where we can see one another face to face, I long for that day. Uh, but this will have to do for now, and we thank God for this virtual experience of worship. Well, there is a word from the Lord today I would like to call your attention to. Matthew chapter 21, verses 18 to 22. And there you will find these words, Matthew chapter 21, verses 18 to 22. It reads as follows. Early in the morning, Jesus was on his way back to the city. and He was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. And he said to it, may you never be fruitful again. Immediately, the tree withered. And when the disciples saw this, they were amazed and asked the question, how did the fig tree wither so quickly, they asked. And Jesus replied, truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you can you do what has been done to this fig tree? But also you can say to this mountain, go and throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. If you believe, if you have faith, you will receive whatever you ask in prayer. Uh, this is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. For a few mo moments, I would like to pose a question to you and pose a question even to myself. The question is, have you learned, have we learned the lesson 
of the fig tree? Have we learned the lesson of the fig tree? You know, I like the way Eugene Peterson translates this passage. And he writes as follows. He says, early the next morning, Jesus was returning to the city. He was hungry and seeing a long tree alongside the road. He approached it, anticipating a breakfast of figs. When he got to the tree, there was nothing but fig leaves. And he said, no more figs from, from this tree ever. The fig tree withered on the spot, a dry stick. The disciples saw it happen. They rubbed their eyes saying, did we really see this? A leafy tree one minute, a dry stick the next. But Jesus was matter of fact, yes. And if you embrace this kingdom life and don't doubt God, you'll not only do minor feats like this, like I did to this fig tree, but also triumph over huge obstacles. This mountain, for instance, you'll tell, go jump in the lake and it will jump. Absolutely everything ranging from small to large as you make it a part of your believing prayer gets included as you lay hold of God. Amen. Amen. I love that expression by Eugene Peterson. I would like to want us to focus on this, this passage in the sense that God wants to teach us something valuable about this passage of Scripture. He wants to teach us an important lesson. And that is that every moment with Jesus is a teachable moment. And when we read the gospel narratives of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we come to quickly realize that every day with Jesus is an adventure. In other words, no one can ever be in a dynamic relationship and vibrant relationship with Jesus and live a boring life. Let me say that one more time for spiritual emphasis, that no one can ever be in a dynamic and vibrant relationship with Jesus and live a boring life. And, and the reason that is true is because Jesus is always leading us outside of our comfort zone because that's where we do the most growing. That's where we become spiritually mature. He leads us uh, outside of our comfort zone in such a way that we have to depend on his word, that we have to depend on his will and depend on his way uh, when we are outside of our comfort zone. The other thing that, uh, that we see in this lesson, and this is what I want to really zero in on is that Jesus has expectations of his followers that you don't just walk with Jesus. You're not just in a relationship with Jesus and uh, Jesus uh, does not want us to be complacent in our relationship with him. He does not want us to be satisfied with where we are in our spiritual growth. Jesus expects has expectations of his followers. And Jesus has every right to expect something from us because after all, he died on the cross for our sins. After all, he rose from the dead and declared that all power was in his hands. After, after all, he died for our sins that we might uh, take on his righteousness. And so Jesus has every right to expect something from us. And when we take a look at this lesson, Jesus uh, it's early Monday morning and Jesus is making his way to another city and he's beginning and he's getting ready to do ministry. But he he's he sees a fig tree from a distance and he notices that there are leaves on the tree. And as he gets closer to the tree, he discovers that there are no figs on the tree. And Jesus is somewhat disappointed, but I think what he's really doing, he's showing that He's showing the, the teachability of this moment because the, the, the fig tree was not fulfilling its purpose. It was not being productive. It was not being fruitful. And, and likewise, Jesus wants to give a teach or teach the disciples 
an object lesson from this fig tree situation. He wants to teach us a lesson from this fig tree situation. First of all, he wants to teach us that he expects fruitfulness. Jesus expects fruitfulness from our lives. When he got to this fig tree, he knows that it did not have uh, any fruit. It had a lot of leaves, but no, no fruit. Uh, like the fig tree, Jesus comes to the church looking for fruit, only to find that the church is full of leaves. Like the fig tree, we are loaded with leaves, but no fruit. Loaded with church work, but not the work of the church. Church work is what we do inside the church. We, it's easy to be a good deacon inside the church. It's easy to be a good elder inside the church. It's easy to be a good ministry leader inside the church. But the work of the church leads us beyond the four walls of the church and to be a deacon in the neighborhood, to be an elder in our community, to be an elder on the job, to to be a person of influence beyond the four walls of the church. Many times in the church we're loaded with titles, but no real testimony because we have not really trusted God. We, uh, our trust only goes so far as our finances. Our trust only goes so far as our comfort zone. But God wants us to have a testimony of what he can do for us when we don't have all of the niceties of life. Uh, many times we come to the church, we're loaded with pride, with our chest stuck out, but no humility. You see, God gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud. God wants us as Christians to always be in a posture of humility, not in a posture of pride. Sometimes when we come to the church, we're loaded with gossip, but not with the gospel. God wants us not to be gossipers, but he wants us to be people who proclaim the good news, good news tellers. God wants us to be in a vibrant relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. And when we are in a vibrant relationship with Christ, we can say with what the Apostle Paul said, that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for in it lies the power of God un, unto salvation to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. God wants us to live a gospel-shaped life. Sometimes as church folk, we are loaded with tradition, but no relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, one of the things we have to be careful about with tradition is tradition is never meant, was never meant to be an end in itself. It's a means to an end. Whenever we begin to treat tradition like an end in itself, we begin to act Pharisaic. We begin to act like Sadducees in the religious aristocracy of Jesus' day. We begin to get puffed up and proud. And Jesus wants us to be in an organic relationship with him. You see, our churches are loaded with leaves, but no real fruitfulness, and you can never be too fruitful for God. God expects us to be productive. He expects us to be fruitful. He expects us to be growing and to be in a relationship with him. He didn't save you and me just to be full of leaves. But when God looks at the branches of our lives, there ought to be fruit on it. There should be some fruit on it. You know, the thing about fruit is fruit is never for the tree itself. Fruit is for others to partake of. And fruit is not for us. It's for people whom we come into contact with every day. It's for our brothers and sisters. It's for unbelievers. We ought to be bearing fruit in such a way that it's for not for us, but it's for others. So Jesus as D.A. Carson points out, that Jesus is cursing those who make a show of bearing fruit, but are spiritually barren. D.A. Carson goes on to say that this is a symbolic indictment against the Pharisees and Sadducees due to their advertisement of religious piety, 
but no real fruit. The cursing of the fig tree is an acted parable cursing hypocrites. Jesus also used the fig tree situation to teach on the power of prayer. The first thing is Jesus expects fruitfulness, but not only does he expect that, he expects faithfulness. He expects faithfulness. God expects us to be faithful. And, and this is what he says to, to the disciples when they begin to uh, be, they, they are in amazement of what Jesus has done. They, they are amazed that this, he spoke to the fig tree and it withered at once. Disciples saw it with their own eyes. They were amazed. And the scripture says, they begin to ask the question, how did the fig tree wither at once? How did it wither so fast? And look at what Jesus says to them. He says, truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, I just want to park right there because he, he, he just said something very profound. He says, if you have faith uh, and don't doubt it, in other words, if you consistently have faith, if you consistently trust me, if you consistently trust and obey, faith in, in, involves obedience. And as Eugene Peterson says in his book, it's a long obedience in the same direction. It's, it's a focus. It's, it's focusing on God. It's the writer of Hebrews says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. And he who comes to God must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So God expects us to have faith. As one writer put it, that faith, a faith that has not been tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. God, oftentimes uh, in our journey, our Christian journey, will test our faith as he did Abraham. He will test our faith as he did David. He, he will test our faith as he did Peter. He, oftentimes God tests our faith to help us to develop our faith muscles so that when challenges come, we have the strength to handle that challenge in our lives. But it, it, it also comes that G, G, Jesus expects faithfulness because faithfulness and fruitfulness go hand in hand. It goes hand in hand. When we, when we, when we are faithful, we can't help but be fruitful. In other words, I think, you know, my, my grandmother used to have a, on her kitchen table, she had a centerpiece. Uh, and it was a basket of cosmetic fruit. It had the apples in it. It had some oranges in there and it had uh, some ban bananas in there. And if you were a visitor to my grandmother's house and you walked into the house, you would automatically think that the, that the, tr that the fruit were real. And I thought about that one day because I think sometimes as church folk, we, we conjure up our own cosmetic fruit and we, we, we give others the impression that we are being fruitful when we're actually conjuring up our own fruit. It's not fruit that comes by virtue of our relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, God expects organic fruit, fruit that comes naturally by virtue of our relationship with Jesus Christ. He wants us to have organic fruit. You, when you're in a vibrant relationship with Jesus Christ, you can't help but love people. When you're in a vibrant relationship with Jesus Christ, you, you can't help but encourage one another. When you're in a re vibrant relationship with Jesus Christ, you can't help but visit the sick. And you can't help but uh, minister to those who are marginalized in society. You can't help but visit those who are in prison. You can't help but clothe those who are naked when you are in a vi vibrant and vital relationship with Jesus Christ. Because... As Jesus did, as he walked the dusty roads of Jerusalem, so will you do. You will do some of the same things that, that Jesus did as, as a church. Uh, we will do some of the same things that Jesus did. But not only does he expect faithfulness, not only does he expect fruitfulness, God expects fortitude, spiritual fortitude. In other words, he expects spiritual fortitude. Stamina. He does not want us to give up. He does not want us to throw in the towel. He expects us to be strong in the faith. Look at what he says here in the latter part of, of, 
of verse 21 and down to verse 22. He said, Jesus asked and said, truly, I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only will you do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, it will be done. Whatever you ask for in prayer with faith, there's that word again, you will receive. What, what this implies is that the, the disciples, by virtue of their relationship with Jesus Christ, they have stamina. Uh, they have the fortitude. God has deposited something in them uh, that they can stand the test of time, that they are built to last. God will give us the spiritual stamina to make it through trials and tribulations. Uh, and no doubt uh, this, this past year, this pandemic and COVID-19 has challenged us as Christians, has challenged us as a church and has challenged us as believers. But by virtue of our relationship with Jesus Christ, we were able to overcome some insurmountable obstacles in our lives, things that happen to us personally, uh, things that happen to us uh, as family and as a church, God brought us through and it wasn't because of our own ingenuity, but it was the grace of God. It was the, the power that God put in us to, to stand the test of time. And this is what Jesus is saying to his disciples that if you have faith and if you are in a, a uh, if you have a prayer life, if you're living a life that's prayer conditioned, you will be able to overcome some things. You see what prayer does, it, prayer gives us spiritual stamina. Prayer gives us uh, fortitude. As my grandmother used to say, uh, no prayer equals no power. Some prayer equals some power and much prayer equals much power. This is what Jesus is saying to his disciples. He says, pray yourself full that when challenges come, you will have the spiritual fortitude to make it through that situation. That's my prayer for you. That's my prayer for me, brothers and sisters. Jesus expects us to be fruitful. He expects us to be faithful and he expects us to have the spiritual fortitude to stand the test of time but to overcome insurmountable obstacles in our lives by virtue of our relationship with him and now let us pray father god we thank you for your word today and lord we pray that you help us not only to be hearers of your word but also doers that we may be blessed in all that we do according to your will in Jesus' name we pray.